back. As we prepare for the fast approaching 2020 general elections, there are some concerns of voter suppression and inequities exacerbated by the pandemic. What should we look out for here in the Bronx during election season? Joining us now to share more about voting and voter suppression is Josefa Velasquez. She is a senior reporter at the city. Josefa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so first, can you just tell us about yourself and your work over at the city? Yeah, so uh, like you mentioned, I'm a senior reporter at the city, which is a nonprofit uh, news website. We launched in April of 2019, and I have <clears throat> the distinction of being the one that covers sort of politics and policy for New York State. So that just means, you know, not just the things that are happening in the city, but also things that are happening at the state capitol in Albany and how that affects everyone here in New York City. Thank you, Josefa. And just to start with the definition, what is voter suppression for our viewers who may not be familiar with the term? Yeah, so voter suppression is just a fancy way of saying one group does not want another group to vote. So what voter suppression uh, means is that one group, whether it's Democrats, Republicans, one ethnic group, is trying to make it really difficult for another group to vote. Um, so when you see that word, just think about it's made, they're trying to make it harder for you to vote. That's it. And are certain communities more susceptible to voter suppression? What types of suppression are Bronx sites and communities of color and elderly more likely to face? Yeah, so the interesting thing about voter suppression is that uh, everyone does it. Republicans do it to Democrats, Democrats do it to Republicans, Republicans do it to Republicans, Democrats do it to Democrats. Um, in the Bronx, it's interesting because it's a really blue area, so you have a lot of Democrats, but that doesn't mean that voter suppression doesn't happen up there. You have different um, politicians who are doing it to other politicians or other elected officials. Um, and you know, in the Bronx particularly, you can have sort of, you know, the new wave of Democrats, so the more liberal uh, progressive Democrats doing it to more traditional sort of mainline middle of the road Democrats. Um, and similarly, you know, for uh, elderly populations, voter suppression, that's the interesting thing about voter suppression, that it could look so different to so many people. Um, but for elderly communities, it could mean, you know, it's more difficult for you to go out and cast your vote in uh, this upcoming election. So now that we have, you know, this whole pandemic going on, it's, the state's been trying to make it easier for people to vote by mail or to cast their votes early. So in a way, trying to force people to vote only on election day could be seen as a form of voter suppression because people are scared about like their health and well-being with COVID-19 out there. Absolutely. And in a recent um, presentation, you actually brought up some of the issues in the June 2020 elections. Um, are we susceptible to, to seeing these same issues resurface again in the general elections? Yeah. So it's funny that you bring that up. You know, right after I gave that presentation, everything sort of blew up in Brooklyn, where you had people who got an absentee ballot have a different address on their return envelope. And that is a form of voter suppression because it's making it difficult for people to just get their ballot, write it down, mark it back in, because now you just have someone else's address on there, someone else's information, and the state is trying to figure out like, okay, well, how do we fix this? Um, and how do we fix this quickly? Um, but during the June primary, uh, there were issues where people would go to the ballot box, people would go to their polling site, and they didn't get the full ballot. They either got one page of it or the other page, but not the whole thing together. There were also issues of people requesting absentee ballots and never getting them. So we learned from that experience and are trying to make it better, but like we're, what, a month away now? Who knows what's going to happen between now and then. Josef, I recently read that Texas Governor Greg Abbott limited counties to only one location for collecting completed mail ballots as a way to enhance, quote, ballot security protocol, end quote. Can this be deemed as suppression? And are we at risk of encountering these issues here in the Bronx during COVID-19? Yeah, so that's definitely um, considered suppression, I would argue, especially because if you have, let's say, one polling place per county, that means that every single person who wants to vote has to go to that one spot. Now, 
imagine that now and with the pandemic where people are have been told like don't do mass gatherings stay six feet away from each other if you have asthma which you know the bronx has high rates of asthma and that makes you more susceptible of getting really sick from this virus do you really want to risk your health to go cast your ballot maybe not if you're older uh and you have maybe some other chronic health conditions, or even if you're perfectly healthy, do you really want to risk your health and safety and risk the health and safety of your family to co-cast your ballot? You know, that's probably not a risk you're willing to take. You know, I think uh, the New York City Board of Elections is supposed to come up with their plan for uh, early voting and trying to come up with like areas to drop off your ballot so you don't have to wait online the day of. Um, but it's really, it's likely that we might see that happening um, in, on election day where you have these really long lines and people just saying, I'm not going to try to put my health at risk for something like this. Like the Bronx is blue anyway, and New York goes blue anyway. So why does it matter? But you know, it does matter. Right. I'm sure that's a sentiment for a lot of folks in the Bronx as well. And mm -hmm. early voting is only a few weeks away. If that plan is not under surge yet, imagine you know, we're all going to be confused yet again during yeah. during voting season. Um, also, about, does voter suppression exist online in the digital realm? If so, what does it look like online? Yeah, so it absolutely exists online. And like I said, it can look completely different. So it could all start out with, you know, one person posting on Facebook or like in the WhatsApp group between you and your family or like your, your neighbor saying, hey, I heard that, you know, this polling place is closed. It's just basically voter suppression could just be a rumor that someone hears about that isn't like verified and it starts spreading that something along the lines of, well, you know, I heard this polling place is closed. I heard the mail, the post office is not delivering uh, or throwing out certain people's ballots. Um, and that just is the match that ignites the fire and it spreads. I mean, nothing spreads faster than like a rumor on WhatsApp uh, between like different families and different communities. So that's something to look out for. I mean, if you start seeing, you know, your Facebook friends, your family members start saying, you know, this, we heard this is happening, always try to question it unless it comes from like a good source or, you know, try to ask the question yourself because the, the way things spread online is like a wildfire. So it's crazy and it takes so many different forms and can look so different to uh, different people. And it could be some tiny little thing that just then gets blown out of proportion. That is so true. And um, just before we go, Josefa, how can people protect their votes this season? Yeah, so what um, people are saying, elected officials are saying, is to vote, if you can, vote in person. New York is allowing people to vote early. So if it's possible, and you can do it, vote early and in person. If you can't do that, then don't wait until the last minute to mail in your ballot. That's what the post office has sort of been, you know, really, really sounding the alarms over is send in your vote as soon as possible. The last thing you want is for it to get stamped on the day after and your vote doesn't count. Make sure that if you're gonna vote through a mail-in ballot, do it as soon as possible. If you're gonna vote early, do it as soon as possible because the last thing you should do is be able to vote in person the day of. Like you don't, that's for the people that can't, you know, didn't plan well enough or don't have other time to do it. But, you know, at least you have this like runway of time to be able to cast your vote before, you know, the big day. Absolutely. Great advice. Thank you so much. I read um, somewhere that over 500,000 ballots were rejected and discarded due to human error in the primary elections. That's things like not filling in the bubbles and marking X's and checks marks instead or um, forgetting to sign the back of the ballot, um, the absentee ballot, actually, and dating it as well. Some people as well, like uh, Josefa just mentioned, actually submitted it after the November, that I mean, the deadline at the time. So we have to ensure that we submit our ballots before the deadline. That's November 3rd, um, this election season. And if you are dropping it off in person at an early voting poll site, you have between October 24th and November 1st to do that at a poll site in person and November 3rd by 9 p.m. or at the Bronx County Board of Elections here in the Bronx, no later than November 3rd by 9 p.m. Um, if you miss any of those guidelines, your ballot is subject to be discarded. And that can be some type of of voter suppression, no, Josefa? 
Yeah, and you know, the thing to also consider is that while yes, New York usually does tend to go blue in the presidential election, we're not just voting for president here. There are so many other things down the ballot line. And, you know, your local elected official, whether that's your congressperson, your state senator, your state assembly member, those are all people who you probably interact with most and who have more of an impact on your day-to-day -day life than say the president does. So, you know, make sure to go down the line and, you know, try to research, you know, who's running in your area? Are you okay with what they're saying and the positions that they have? Because it's not just, you know, president that we're looking out for, it's also the elected officials and that are local. And those races can be really, really close. We're talking like sometimes it's up to a dozen or two dozen votes that determines who wins that race. So that's something to take into consideration. Your vote counts. It absolutely counts. Don't let anyone say otherwise because in these local races, you know, it could be up to 100 votes that determine the winner, even less than that. That is so true. Thank you, Josefa Velasquez, senior reporter at the city, for joining us today and discussing this very important topic of voting and voter suppression. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, you can follow at J underscore Velasquez on Twitter and read her work as well on voter suppression and more at thecity.nyc. We'll be right back.